Hey everybody, Paul here. Now, as you may not be aware, some of you might, but the end of this month, Blender 2.83 should be out in official release. And so going forward for the duration of this month, all my videos will be basically working in the 2.83 beta. Now, if you want to follow along with any of the videos, uh, I would highly recommend you go over to the blender.org website, click on their downloads link, and scroll to the bottom of the page where it says go experimental. Clicking on this will send you to a slightly different download page where you will be able to download the Blender 2.83 beta and try. What does beta mean? Well, it just means that all of the features have been locked off these are the features and the feature sets that are going to be available in the official release, but they're just doing general bug tracking and crash reporting and all those sorts of technical things, which we don't normally concern ourselves with, but which are vitally important before an official release. I'm really excited today because this tutorial has got to do with a new feature in Grease Pencil, and that is vertex uh, coloring, which is already present in some form, but in the new version, uh, they've introduced color palettes, and I really want to show you how to work with those color palettes when working with uh, vertex coloring on your grease pencil design, and also where the pros and cons of still working in materials uh, versus working in vertex colors uh, lie. So why don't we jump into Blender version 2.83 beta and take a look. So today I'm going to take a look at a new feature and that is called vertex coloring in the Blender 2.83 beta. Normally what we would do to color a particular picture uh, such as this, let's take a look at this one for instance, is to create a bunch of custom materials each with their own stroke and fill properties and base color and the advantage of this method is that at any time we could go in and edit that base color, and it would automatically show up. What's more, we could probably make a duplicate. Let's say we do this. Let's make the skin tone two. I'm going to actually leave skin tone one here because this one is assigned to this color already, and I'm going to assign skin tone two here, and then change the color. What that means is that skin tone one is still preserved, but skin tone two is now being created as this alternate color uh, that we can use. And so materials are still very, very versatile. Now with vertex colors, the process is a little bit different. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the N key over here to get our tool properties window up over here so we can still see our grease pencil and materials properties over here as we're working. And this particular grease pencil tool has only got a few uh, materials assigned to it, a stroke and a fill, a white fill and a black fill. Now the white and black fills on this particular object uh, are basically highlights and shading, which we won't touch right now. So I'm just gonna make them invisible. So I'm just gonna have my inks there and my solids layer that I'm going to be working with. We could probably just shrink this down a little bit. And in terms of materials, we're just gonna be working with stroke and fill. I'm gonna go into draw mode over here and as we know, the conventional way of working, let's just unpin that, would be to add a material. Let's go with skin tone here. And with our bucket fill tool, we would click on that area and it would fill it based on the boundaries of the inks or any other grease pencil objects that are in the area. Okay, so in this case, we can do this skin color here. Now I've actually set my leak size quite high. And the thing is that you have to watch this size over here. Let's just erase these to illustrate this. Because sometimes if the leak size is too small, you will go into other areas. Uh, and you may even get an error, although I don't seem to be getting one today, which is great. Now with vertex colors, it's a little bit different. What I'm going to do here is on my pen, I'm going to assign the stroke material and pin it. And on my fill area, I'm going to assign the fill material and pin it so that every time I go from stroke to fill, it will automatically switch 
from a fill material to a stroke material. I'm now going to switch from material mode to vertex mode. And here in our active tool, I'm just gonna collapse this brushes, dialog boxes and open up color. And what you will notice is that under vertex color, we now have this palette that we can work with. How does this work? Well, let's select a color from this palette. Let's say we wanted a, a sort of a brownie skin tone over here. With this stroke, now we can stroke a line that is this particular color. I'm just gonna erase this for a moment and just put this stroke in here where we wanted to create a boundary. I'm gonna go over to fill, which we know is gray, and we should have the same color assigned to it. Um, we can now fill with that color. And then just by switching between stroke and fill, we can use the same palette color on vertex for both uh, these areas, which is kind of handy. Creating palettes is actually pretty versatile. I'm gonna create a new palette here. Now I've already created one uh, for my purposes, but I'm gonna create a brand new palette to show you how it's done. I'm gonna base this palette on this particular image on the left. So I'm going to go to this add new palette button. You'll see that it goes palette one, and I'm gonna call this Danny two. And uh, you'll see that there are no swatches right now. But what I can do is on this color, I can go color pick the skin tone, and then I can hit this plus button and it creates a swatch based on that particular color. I color pick again for the hair and add and so on for the other colors that I need to create for this color palette. And finally, I'm going to do a black and a white just for tones. You can then sort this color palette by uh, you know, value or luminance or hue, uh, however you like, however you like to work. And then you can pin this, uh, this palette, so you get, assign it a fake user, so you don't lose it. And then what you have is a custom palette for your character so that then when we're doing uh, applying our fill, we've got our skin tone here, skin tone boundary, there we go, skin tone, uh, we want the hair color, uh, fill that, fill that, fill our other areas over here for the hair color. Uh, I'm just gonna get this skin tone going again uh, with this stroke here. I'm just gonna make this nice boundary down here. And then I'm gonna fill in this, okay. Obviously it's not reading correctly, so I'm gonna have to quickly make a little, okay. And by just quickly adjusting certain parameters, we can fill in an area. I'm gonna draw in a couple of lines here for the lip color. One, two, three. Fill in this area for that. Draw in white for the eyes. One, two, on the white, fill in that, and with the irises. And I've basically got my color palette here, but if I went into solid mode, you'll see that the automatic difference is that all of the materials that show up in your solid settings have a color on there, right? But because we've been using just this gray material in solids, only in material preview do we actually see those materials. But of course, things like shadows and highlights work just the same because the same blend modes have been applied um, and it looks you know, just as good. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, clearly the main disadvantage is that with this particular method of, of painting with vertex color mode, 
the only way you can really replace it is by erasing that created stroke or refilling it. Say we want a blue hair here, you might be left with some small patches of the underlying color, okay? So replacing stuff is not so simple as with materials. But creating custom palettes for your particular character uh, is a lot easier to do. And these can be stored in your file uh, for whenever you need to, to use a palette. And the other, of course, advantage is that you're working with far fewer materials. Now, one last little uh, trick is that you can actually create a palette from an image. So let's say we went and created a new palette and we loaded an image and then we went extract palette from image we would then have a reference palette with all of the colors that it picked from that image. And obviously this is a heck of a lot more than the one we just created. And so, you know, uh, sometimes extracting a palette can be good, but it can also be problematic. And of course, rendering is just as good, okay? You got this here, the material colors versions and the vertex color version uh, look just as good as each other. And uh, in the end, it's just basically a workflow uh, type of scenario. So I hope you got a lot out of that video. As always, if you liked what you saw here and you wanna be notified of any upcoming content, uh, do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you're feeling at all generous, why not join the legions of Patreon supporters over on my Patreon page? It is the support that I get through Patreon that makes the production of these videos possible. Thanks again for watching everyone. This is Paul signing off. Bye for now.